Overcoat. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Callahan. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. What's the scoop? I've heard rumors that something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. And, oh, we mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the Stay Sober Society? Not to mention all the charitable institutions that depend on me for soup deliveries. You make hot soup deliveries? It's one of my many small contributions to the good cause. Healthy bodies, healthy souls. Or so one hopes. I pick up barrels of hot soup at the kitchen, and I deliver them hither and thither. Hill Valley Orphanage, the St. Francis Xavier Ranch for Unwanted Children, Foggy Mountain Home for the Incurably Insane, Shady Acres Rest Home. Oh, I can barely keep track of them all. It's a very big job. Hey, I can help you deliver soup, but I don't need a lot of time to charities. Oh? Which ones? The, um, Mario Brothers. Ah, yes. The Italians do so many good works. If you'll just fix it so I can pick up the barrels of soup. Now hold your horses, let's not get over eager. I drive the soup cycle in this town, and I'm not about to turn it over to an upstart. But, if you're well connected with the local charitable institutions... Yeah? You can let me know when they're running low on soup. As a matter of fact, I do know a local charity that's running low on soup. Oh? Who? A farm for unwanted children. Perhaps their parents don't want them because they eat too much. Alright, Edna. Just think of all those poor unfortunates and hold your nose. Mr. Donnelly! A cue ball. What? The truck just arrived with a fresh shipment of, uh, soup. Soup soup? Well, uh, this is the regular soup, and this is the special soup. Right. Special. Hey, what are you doing? I'm spicing up the soup. It's my secret recipe. Listen, this ain't the Savoy, and we ain't here to feed these bozos no fancy soup. The boss has got a business to rebuild, so knock off the goofing and mind your post. All right, all right, just try the soup. Well? Ah, I can see why you want to keep this a secret. Uh, excuse me. Yeah? Could I have a bowl of soup? We're a soup kitchen. What do you think? Uh, what kind of soup is this? It, it tastes like... Scroll a ribolita? I was gonna say weak old cabbage. Everyone's a critic. Look. All I got to work with is this two-bit soup in a barrel and spice rack that hadn't been restocked since the Coolidge administration. What do you think I should do to perk this slop up? Let's see. Have you tried... Giving the soup a little heat, maybe? Why, is it getting cold? No, I mean, like chili powder. Muy caliente. 
Oh, bit of a tough guy, huh? Actually, I like it spicy too, but it's gotta be edible for the common folks. Come on, a little dash isn't gonna kill anyone. Aw, oh, heck. You got moxie, kid. Let's spice it up a bit, shall we? Looks like these pipes go into the basement. There's no way I'm gonna keep that door open without some help. Huddle up, Emmett. Huddle? Just listen up for a second. Any ideas about how to get the hooch? Hooch? The alcohol, Emmett. Ah, one might come to the conclusion that the hooch is being hidden in some of those barrels. You're probably right, but which ones? Now, if I could get my hands on some of those barrels, I could weigh them and compare their specific gravity. Specific gravity? Come on, Emmett. Kids' goons aren't going to let us do an experiment on their barrels. Oh, I suppose you're right. We'll just have to ask the guy behind the counter. What? Ask him if any of his barrels are filled with illegal moonshine? Get real here. Well, I imagined a modicum of subtlety would be used. Subtlety. Right. Emmett, I can't get into the door over there. Those tables are jamming it shut. The door? So your plan is to just waltz in there and take a barrel of alcohol? Uh, no. Of course not. That would be stupid, right? I'll say. Still, I'd like to get that door open. I can't do anything from out here. Well, it's a simple matter of physics. A lever, some sort of stop. Let me see what I can come up with. There's no way I'm going to keep that door open without some help. Eureka! Nice rack. Yeah, we got all kinds of... Uh, culinary enhancements back there. It's kind of blocked off there, isn't it? Yeah, but what can you do? Excuse me. You talking to me? Why is the soup in a barrel? Cause it's hard to ladle off the floor? What's a tough guy like Kid Tannen doing running a soup kitchen? Mr. Tannen purchased the soup kitchen from the Sisters of Mercy in an effort to repair his reputation as a respectable community figure after his fine name was besmirched by the malignant and malicious Melissa's the actions of the misguided vandals that 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 done burned down his place of business. Is speakeasy. I cannot confirm nor deny any claims of so-called illegal bootlegging at the the <laughs> just eat your damn soup, pipsqueak. Mind if I look around a bit? No. Emmett. Yes? Oh, that's... interesting. Just a little mechanical ingenuity. In the end, the door is open. Yeah, good job. 
Obviously, this kitchen isn't the speakeasy. Indeed. This must be some sort of front meant to cleverly and legally obfuscate the existence of a hidden establishment of ill repute. Perhaps in the basement. Right. That might explain the elevator. We'll score that hooch somehow. I'll keep cogitating. Okay, I've got some more ideas about your soup. Do tell. Let's see. Have you tried... Salt? Salt? What, do you think it's too bland? Too mild? I didn't put too much pepper in it, did I? I just think it could use a little more salt. No accounting for taste these days. Pretty neat, Doc. <laughs> nope. I'm still not getting through here. But at least those tables are propped up now. Miss Strickland, come for some more soup? Come now, Mr. Donnelly. You know I wouldn't set one foot in this mockery of all that is good and decent if the poor of Hill Valley weren't so dependent on Mr. Tennant's overblown show of generosity. Was that a yes? Just give me the soup before I gag on the hypocrisy. I'll tell the boss you said hello. I'll just bet you will. And they picked up the barrel of hooch. Now all we have to do is to get it from her somehow. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Callahan. I'm afraid I haven't much time. The meeting of the Stay Sober Society is due to begin very soon. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit for my soup cycle? The rest home. No, it's way past their bedtime. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit for my soup cycle? The insane asylum. No, too much soup makes them nervous. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit for my soup cycle? The orphanage. No, they've already got all the soup they can handle. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit for my soup cycle? The farm for unwanted children. No, they've already received their quota for the month. I'm sorry about the way Einstein lit into you back there. I don't know what got into him. Well, I hope you've learned to keep him under control. Yeah, I found someone to keep him distracted. Very good. Now let's see if you know your multiplication tables. What's the Stay Sober Society? 
You haven't heard of the SSS? They do the most marvelous work, taking hopeless drunken bums and turning them into former hopeless drunken bums. I'm one of the founding members. And not to say that I was ever, well, you know. Anyway, we've always met in the cellar of the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen, but for some reason the new managers don't want us down there, so we're stuck. We've got nowhere to meet. I know a place where the Stay Sober Society can meet. Oh? Where? The Brown Residence. You mean Judge Brown's place? Yeah, I happen to be good friends with his son Emmett, and he's told me the judge would love to lend his place out for, you know, good causes like yours. Really? Why, that's the most generous, public-spirited offer I've received in a month of Sundays. Please, tell your friend Emmett we accept. And the offer couldn't have come at a better moment. It's almost time for the meeting to begin. Did you finish the story you interviewed me for? About Carl Sagan? Yes, but those pig-headed editors at the paper rejected it. They said my story was slanted, and that I was glorifying a suspected arsonist. As if their stories aren't always glorifying the criminal vermin that run this town. This whole thing makes me so mad I could spit! Though of course I never would. There's an ordinance against it, and it's so untidy. I got a book. Oh? Where? This might be a stupid question, but couldn't you have designed your rocket-powered drill to run on fuel that, you know, isn't illegal? Illegal? What does law have to do with science? Science has its own laws. You of all people should know that. You have to deliver a lot of subpoenas? Father's always sending me out to do these dirty jobs. He wants to expose me to different kinds of people. All he's exposed me to is a lot of new curse words. If serving subpoenas is such dirty work, why don't you just say no? Look, what's the worst thing that can happen to me on this job? You could get shot. Yeah, well, believe me, that's nothing compared to what I'll get if I mouth off to my pop. Any idea where we could find Artie? Not a jot. If only we had a way of tracking him. How about Kid Tannen? What do we know about him? He's loud, he's obnoxious, he's not very bright, and he doesn't like anybody getting in his way. Yep, that's a tannin, all right. Some of us down at the patent office are wondering, what made you think of a rocket-powered drill? Ah, that'd be Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. It was... a revelation! Yeah, that's kind of what we figured. you read The Time Machine? H.G. Wells? Not yet, but it's on my list. But couldn't you tweak your engine design a little so it runs on something else? Like what? I don't know. Gas, maybe? Gasoline? Pfft. Yesterday's news. You'll see. By 1940, automobiles will all run on pure alcohol. We'll get that subpoena delivered. My name isn't... Harry Callahan! Yeah. What the hell, Matches? You, you got Kiwi all over my socks! Sorry, boss. Get out of here. How about you? Huh? I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it? I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. He's very busy today. So when do you think Arthur will be leaving the office? When I tell him he can leave the office. Hey, you missed a spy. Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> Could I buy Arthur's hat off you? 
Could you keep your mind on your work, huh, shoeshine boy? I'm hanging on to my peanut bowl. Can I have some peanuts? Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Hey, kid! Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey! What'd you do? That hat, you lousy crook! Emmett! Emmett! Nobody makes a monkey out of Kid Tannen! Al, fix me up. Where do you learn how to move like that? Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out. <laughs> 